Hi, welcome to class. We're the only two right now, but the other ones will show up eventually, right? Hmm. I hate my life. I hate my life. Hey, Professor Sunrise Productions! Hello, class. Professor Sunrise here. Euros are finally over, and honestly, Dragon did a little too well for my taste. I'll put the chart down here. That's a little bit too much of you guys. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are actually on this channel, but that's a lot of people on Dragons, and even more people topping with Dragons, so that definitely puts, like, a at least a bigger target on our back. Probably only just Magnum, which we're just gonna be hit at some point in some point in the future. But anyways, this is not what this video is about. In today's class, we're gonna take a look of a Reaper analysis of Bowden, I think was his name. I don't know if that's correct, but you will see it very, very soon. Playing Dragon Link versus Earth Machine in the top 64 feature match, I think it was. And we will just be going over that completely blind. I haven't seen it. I was busy the whole week just enjoying my life. Apart outside from Yugi, I know it sounds crazy. Don't like it either, honestly. But anyways, if you guys have any other cool replays of you guys playing dragons or playing versus dragons or playing anything else, just a cool replay with, with a very exciting match, definitely send them to my email down in the description below. I would love to go over them in a replay analysis like this. So without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave some feedback down in the comment section below and let's get right into the replay. So here we are in the replay. Let's quickly put up that speed. Uh, let's 1.5 should be fine, right? And like an one hour bot. We probably want to get a little bit faster through this. So game one, the opponent, I think Boston and Petros are the names, by the way. Uh, and let's see who wins the die roll here. Um, Petros, by the way, okay, Petros wins the die roll, by the way, a known Earth Machine player, all, um, apparently. Uh, Boston, I think I've seen them in a feature match before, but I might be wrong. They start out with Gearframe here, which is a starter. Uh, it searches out this guy, which then in turn can summon themselves uh, and do something differently. Maybe they will be shown here. That's the guy. Um, this is called normal or special. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anyways. Uh, so they dump a gear frame. I think that's the wrong card, right? It's not this card. This is the, another card. I think this one adds and then dumps. Yeah. So they go for Gig Gigan X. Uh, we could... Quickly get a glance at Boston's hand here. Maybe we can get a glance again. That looked like an Ash. That could be Ravine. That's a Chaos Base, I think. And a Lubellion. But maybe I'm wrong and that's not an Ash. Because I feel like you would have maybe Ash or at least thought about that. So that's Infinity Track. That's the Infinity Track Normal Summon. But they already used the Normal Summon, of course. So they cannot use that. Interesting that they searched it and they... Pitch Tunnel up for cost for Machina Deployment, being able to search two out. That's Citadel, I think, and that's the the Dark Citadel, uh, which uh, both do Graveyard shenanigans. They're both very important, but this, of course, probably going to get banished by Bistial very soon. Uh, they pitch that for the gear... I don't know what's it called. Machina Gear Force or whatever, linking off into Platinum Gadget. Oh, they use Platinum Gadget to get the Infinite Track Harvest, I think it's name. Uh, out out of the hand, of course, makes sense. Um, and now they can search the guy which tributes and then summons from deck, I believe. So they link that off for Goliath. Uh, and then tribute the Goliath. This is just free fodder for the tunnel or later in the combo. They send, uh, summon the... Oh, does this guy summon from the deck? This summons from the deck. Uh, I don't know what this does. Maybe it summons from Grave or something. This also summons itself from Grave. Uh... A whole lot of nothing, honestly. It's just a very decent resource loop or like like advantage generation. Okay, this apparently searches the Earth Machine, but there's very little disruption. Like apart from the Ethereum, there's very little to come here. They're gonna use the Magnumid that the one they had in the hand on the Machina Dark one, which is very important graphite resources. So triggering Magnumid here is huge in this matchup, just because it's not gonna have a lot of alive targets and with Chaos Space in hand. Like search Absorada becomes a very very clean play uh, if the hand uh, is we're crying that them having Lubellion already makes me think that search Absorada here is the correct play. Uh, but depending on the rest of the hand, of course, we do some more link plays here. We have the Therion on the board, so we are completely protected by any excuse me sort of disruption here. They search the gearbox of the um, Ballista, a known play. They search the Infinite Track, whatever for follow up probably. They didn't they already use that or is it a different one? Um, a spell to search and if oh it's the Finitrex searcher. Yes, this stays on the field and it, I think it does very very 
niche things in the field. I don't think it's ever going to be relevant. So they link off further uh, into the uh, Infinite Track Link 2, which I think summons from the graveyard or adds back from the graveyard, something like that. Uh, if you could tell, I don't really play Infinite Track or like Earth Machine whatsoever. They use Tunnel here for a draw 2, I know that one. Uh, and that's, I think that's the extent of what this deck does. It guts, does quite a bit when it comes to advantage of just of one or two card, but uh, not a lot of disruption. So high in value, but very low in tempo, um, at least like going first. And then once it somehow survives a turn, uh, this is where the deck can then shine uh, because then it has a lot of resources to play and then OTK an opponent. Uh, they do have a Citadel in Graveyard. So uh, once Boston decides to destroy one of uh, Petros cards here, uh, one of Petra's monsters, they can get Citadel out, or they just use the effect of that to get the Citadel out, and then they have a quick Raigeki on the opponent's turn uh, next to that. And now they um, go into the uh, Towers, guys, and they can still even get that out. So they have a Tower, they have um, a Regulus, they have the Citadel once something gets removed, and I also think this does even something. This is a little hard to remove. It's not completely... Um, like neck breaking, but it, it can be if he took out that. So they detach one, I think, in in their end phase, so that they have the citadel in the graveyard. Um, but they could have just also done that in the draw phase. Uh, but it, it would be weird because Boston, of course, have priority. Maybe they no no did they? Oh, it was an end phase, right? They didn't even they didn't look they didn't even draw. They had to get the uh, search. Yeah, they search after router here makes perfect sense with chaos space. That's a very good pickup. Um, they're hi highlighting a Kurikara here. Maybe there wasn't an Ash, but a Kurikara in the main deck. That's the baller move. So they're still in end phase. They summon a Serenia. That's, of course, really good. Now with three Serenia being a pretty standard procedure, at least for me, uh, like summoning a Serenia in the end phase is always pretty free. They normal summon Tracer here. That's a very good pickup as well. Probably top deck because then the Absorata Surge isn't as clean and they probably would have just won a safer maybe. Um, but I think there's going to be a quick Synchro 10 here. Um... Dealing with the regulars would be very good. Uh, yeah, burn makes perfectly sense here. Effect Serenia. They do have a Lubellion, I think. So sending Lubellion is not as crazy here. So you could think about sending Regain. Uh, but maybe you want the additional light for the Chaos Base plays. But you probably shouldn't need it. So you could think about that. Uh, they pop an Urgent Schedule. So they're also playing that. A very insane card going second, going first. It is dead. I don't think it does anything in the graveyard there whatsoever. Oh wait, it does something when it gets popped, right? It's Search an Earth Machine. This is just an extender. Think about like Kagamucha Knight, uh, stuff like that. So if they summon one, they can summon this just out of the hand as well. Uh, so it probably won't be doing anything there. Can't tell if any of these are Disruption. Uh, so the Tribute of the Magnemite for the Rebellion, that's a fine play. If you go for it like that, you probably should have would have want to get the Branded Beast. So maybe they are not playing Branded Beast. They are getting the Regain, trying to go for like a a grind approach. Uh, honestly, I don't know enough about Earth Machines to know if this is the correct play right off the bat. Uh, but Branded Beast doesn't seem all too crazy in this matchup just because you don't really want to pop their cards. Um, just because then sit a little triggered. So I think this is a, a very all right play to do. Uh, Chaos Space Pitch apps the best feeling in the world. If you ask me, search Wyvern Burst, I would assume. Um... Is this still on effect? Let's quickly rewind back uh, until the end of this turn. And they didn't activate it yet, so the Baron could negate this. But once they like, they have to commit into something, right? Because um, then Regulus would just negate that, which would be a fine trade. You're probably not going to remove this card anyways, uh, unless you have like a Kurikara in hand. Uh, they searched Wyvern Burster, I assume. Uh, didn't see it. Uh, did they not search with apps? They forgot to search with apps. I guess we will see if they have another rocket in hand. Um, link off the Wyvern Burst, of course, into a Striker Dragon effect, Striker effect that. Maybe uh, just sitting on a Borrow Land is a, like a very good countermeasure because I feel like Earth Machine is going to struggle with outing that. Uh, don't know all of the cards they have in their extra deck, if there's like an Earth Machine specific out, but I highly doubt it. So uh, like countering the opponent's tower with your own tower is always a very good play. Uh, you could also consider just making a seal as well. They do have a levy in hand. Ooh, ultimate rare levy, gotta love it. Uh, two darks, one light. They do have a... No, that's the graveyard, okay. Um, 
So they go for the levy effect for pop two. So now that they have to chain this, and now they ch probably chain regained as well. And then you go for Baron, but that seems so bad. Right? That seems like a. M I don't know if that's a correct play. Um, having the hard drawn levy there is a huge tool, and I think you should probably save that for later. Um, because you like the how you can out this is by you already have a baron, right? So once you have something which outs this, they have to chain. Then you can chain baron, then they chain regular. So if you just summoned a savage there, uh, you would have forced out these two. And then you could have gone for a levy and get rid of the field, or maybe hit something from the hand. Overall, it's hard. Um, so they just baited this out, and then they still have to remove. So they pop these two, and now the citadel triggers, I guess, and then they can negate that with Baron. Yeah, I think I guess that's fine. Yeah, that's a fine play. That's probably the best trade you can get out of that. I take that back. That's as as good as you can get. Just negating the citadel with Baron is very fine. Um, and now you can freely pop off here into like I think I would make the call for Bro land play as well. Um but we'll see they have they should have a tracer in hand and um a what's it called a boot sector and a collapse servant. Th these should be the three cards. Uh so this now used its effect to tribute itself I assume to some of the Citadel still. Now the regen can trigger to get a free body. Uh, Citadel is gonna be a huge blowout here because I think it is like Draw all monsters your opponent's control attack with less or equal to this card. So this has 3k attack. Uh, we will be killing three monsters with this. They have hard run ravine, pitch, tracer. Uh, so they want to go into that with pisty again. I assume sending a safer. That's fine. That's an additional extender. That's follow up. Mm, I don't know if you have to do that, but it's it's not the end of the world. Um, So yeah, could they have done something differently there? Maybe they could have gone for like a very early Chaos Angel. Oh, they play Underworld Goddess probably. No, that they just hard make Borland to play around the Citadel pop. Also interesting that they didn't go for Citadel pop here. Um, but maybe I'm missing something because I feel like like Citadel pop for three is insane. I don't know what I think about hard make Borland here, but I guess if you can make it because Citadel would just punish you too hard and. Borderland should have no. Borderland doesn't give you the um, the arrows for a pissy line, so you cannot you can't get a tracer out, uh, a savage. But you can just negate the what's it called the citadel with a Borderland, right? So that's pretty good. Make a savage or like make a scarlight or something to destroy this, and then just sit on Borderland. That should be a very decent spot. But you gotta have, remember, Petros has four cards in hand, and he has like so many resources still in the extra deck. There probably is going to be a Borderland out because Petros knows this deck, right? So they know that they can deal with Borderland. Otherwise, they would have gone there for a pop. Um, they just have a Judge Call here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Not a Judge Call, but like they're talking about something, I guess. Th set one. And then. I still don't get why they didn't go for like a Savage here. Didn't they have a Dark. Didn't they have a link monster? They should have had a striker dragon. So you could have just gotten a savage here. For basically free. I don't know why they didn't go for that. That seems like a misplay there. So you probably should have gone out for the savage. You get the citadel before you attack it. Make a savage. Have just one negate. Make it not as easy. Probably not going to do a lot, right? But at least it does something. Uh, maybe force them out in the battle phase. Or you can negate the guys which tribute for cost, I believe. Um... They could go for regain, summon Magnamid. I think they probably search Baldrick if they play that with the Magnamid in the end phase. So they are in a very decent spot here. Uh, still, if Petros has an out for the Borderland, of course, uh, it's probably not going to be as decent just because they only have like one line of disruption. And this deck can OTK like crazy. Uh, so the Book of Moon that. Uh, maybe they use their uh, Harvester here to like level manipulation. They make this guy unaffected. Um, probably gonna chain yeah, Borderland on that to negate it. Uh, I think that will get punished here by a Talents or something. I can just smell that. 
Um, they still have a lot of plays. So they link that off for a Goliath. They do have a free link arrow there. Probably not going to matter. Uh, the the Xyz can tribute something or destroy. I don't know. And the uh, summon itself. So that's a line. I don't think the Goliath does anything crazy on the board. I think it's just always just a free link off to get like some fodder in the graveyard. Or like if you want to get something in the grave, you can get that. Uh, so they go for Baldrake, target the Striker. Uh, so they search that off Magnumet, always a very good pickup. They can recycle Striker off the Regained. Um, and now they can stop like a Link-based play or like an Xyz-based play before they get this one out. So this is an effect to summon. They could trigger Baldrake here. Uh, still don't know why they didn't go for a Savage. Like you could have had all of that plus a Savage. Um, you also had two traces in the graveyard, or you would have just gotten it back, so there's, like, no punish there whatsoever. I think that's just an overall misplay. Um, they couldn't have gone battle phase, because I believe this is a 3.2, so even then, they couldn't have done for that, and even then, even if they could go battle phase, you still have a battle phase forced out, and I feel like this borrow land is probably, maybe it doesn't have to get out by battle phase. I feel like Liebe can out it or something, but I'm not too sure. Uh, like the big, big thing which can attack twice. I think it negates effects on a, uh, on attack or something. Um, but we will see. So they make this these the same level and make uh, this Sky Fortress. Hop, see. I think this banishes one without targeting, probably. Uh, I feel like it has four effects. So I think you can banish from field, spell, trap, hand. And oh, yeah, we have it here. You can ditch from active one of these effects. Banish one. Yeah. So it banishes without targeting. So this is where the misplay lies. Uh, if you had a Savage here, you would have, could have just negated that. Uh, if you kept the Baldrake. Uh, what did they Baldrake again? The the Xyz. Maybe they didn't know that. Uh, but I don't know if the Xyz really has like a, a line where it goes into something. I don't think you're scared of any Link Monsters here. But that's, of course, the downside of not, not knowing the matchup. Uh, you just don't have that confidence in Xyz. Exactly these scenarios where you need to uh, n know exactly what the opponent's outs are so that you can play. There comes the Juggernaut Lieber, I think. Uh, is that just game? That's a lot. It can attack like up to the amount of materials it has, plus one, I believe. It, yes, plus one. Does it do piercing? No, but there's probably going to be a big ass Zeus coming down the line. Um, so, yeah. Definitely should have played it differently. You had to use the Borrowland, of course, because the um, other train down here could have just made this one un... Um, what's it called? Like, unaffected. But then again, they cannot change to Borrowland. So you could have always done it, right? And then this can attack three times. And is that game? No, they only can attack with this one. It can only attack twice, I guess, okay. Uh, so they somehow out this with something. Oh, they use Tracer to get a recharger. Um, yeah, that's overall weirdly played. Oh, apparently others can attack as well, but they're probably just becoming uh, becoming a huge Zeus. Uh, and Boston, I hope I say this name correctly, will have a lot of trouble with outing that. Yeah, Zeus with three materials, maybe they can attach one still. So they pass, Magnumet resolves. Uh, pro, they have Saved and Grave for Levy, so they can't out this. Uh, probably just want to search like a normal summon or something. Um, they search, I think, a Bestial. Maybe like a Druze Worm. Yeah, that seems to for me to be a Bestial. Finishing the Call-Up Serpent, summon Druze Worm. Yeah, that makes sense. This can also out the Zeus with very minimal uh, investment. So they have Zeus, they have a uh, Colab Serpent in Grave. No, a Wyvern Burst in hand, sorry, Colab Serpent is banished. They have Safer to add back either Levy or Lubellion. They are deciding to add back Levy. Makes sense. If they have a, still have a Branded Beast, they're like in a fine scenario. Only the, the Regained Resolves here, actually. That's very interesting. I think I should you should have uh, Zeus this because Zeus is going to get out in the next step anyway. Uh, summon Wyvern Burster. That's a little risky because now they could just Zeus here. Oh, they're not gonna... 
Okay, so they get a free Chaos Angel. That's huge, of course. So Petros also seems to not know this matchup all too all too good because you definitely want to Zeus on the regain just because the Drew Storm is going to out that so easily. Um, and the regain is such a menace in a grind game, especially in a simplified game set like this. Uh, Chaos Angel with both effects alive is also going to be huge here. Um... By the way, I know that Boston got kicked out here, so I'm I'm excited, uh, like to see how they actually got out here. So they activate Boot Sector. They still have last cards on the field, so that's crazy. They can go for a Summon Tracer here. Uh, they still have a Disparta in the extra deck. Um, they have a Rebellion in there. Summon a Magnemite. That's huge. Um, Effect Magnemite. Summon on wide effect magnum on the end phase so that's probably gonna be a disparta maybe you could have banished something better there uh, but the borderland is banished so you're probably not gonna have a better target to summon off that than the borderland um yeah so this part of summon borderland here should be the play this pet is gonna still win this somehow uh so that should you tribute that off for Oh, man, I'm so confused. I really should know Earth Machine cards. <laughs> but maybe this match is going to be a reminder for all of you guys to read some cards. Um, summon Borderland. They use this to summon this. Does this something when it gets hit? They still have the Levy, of course. Uh, like for a lie, they should have two Levies there, uh, two Lubellians, and they just scoop. So Pedros scoops out. Boston wins the first game. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so game two. Uh, Petros starts with a gear frame again. Pretty standard stuff. We've seen it before. This one adds itself. They got rolled. Okay, so Boston is on roll. Oh, this is the now the correct card here. This gets added if it's this gets special if it adds if it gets added. Oh my god! And then they can uh, dump one if it gets normal or special. They make a Therian, have the Citadel equipped, and they just pass. So they don't even have like a very decent rank four to sit on. They have a set one here, so that's fine. Uh, Boston with a huge draw. Dark Ruler is fine as well. Uh, that puts Citadel into the Grayfit, which hurts a little bit, because um, if once these gets removed, of course, you have the Citadel there. Quick Launch, also a very good card. Not in Secret Rare, but that's okay. We can we can live with that with the uh, Ultimate Rare Levy. Um, also, Quick Launch spiked heavily in price because of Rocket Coder. Uh, Striker Dragon Effect. No boot sector hard draw. Gotta love to see it. So they can go for boot sectors, summon that. Oh, they got drilled themselves. Uh, that's a stinger. But you still have seal pass, non uh, at least. So what's in the hand? I think that's a chaos base. It seems like boot sector. Uh, ooh, a caliber, normal summon. Okay. Still have tracer there. Um. You can summon, but you can also, of course, go into a dark here or a seal. And you can go boot sector summon too. You could have gone for a complete borderland line here. I think I would have liked this better in this scenario because borrow and actually, you could you saw it in the last game. The opponent's gonna heavily struggle with outing borderland, and now that you know that they have this one exact out, you uh, can play way better with it. But of course, having a magnum up there under the draw is insane. They can still activate it. Add something in the end phase. Um, and then they still have a lot of gas here. You can go for Dispata, summon that. Like Dispata into this zone here, summon Striker Dragon uh, here, summon Pisty there. They can summon something back and they could still go for a lot. Uh, they go for the Tracer, summon Recharger. And of course, they still have that. And uh, there's 100% gonna be a Dispata here. Arguably should have done that before, but that doesn't really matter. You don't expect a lot of disruption here. Uh, Pedro should be on three cards in hand. And I don't think they're on any low impact hand trips because you didn't see any in the game one. Uh, and the, probably there was no like thinking on Pedro's part. Uh, so you don't really expect a lot of non like hand trips here anymore. There's still a set though, which you have to take into consideration. They go for this Pedro. Summon Pisty, effect some of the Striker Dragon. Yeah, so they still go for the basically the same play, uh, just with the Recharger. Uh, they could go for... 
Okay, they go pissy summon Magnamid. And now you can make a Chaos Angel, I guess. Or like a what you could you what could you do here? Yeah, Chaos Angel, I guess. Uh you Dark Lock uh, Dragon Lock, yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Um Yeah, that seemed like a weird play. Because of the seal, right? If you just go for it, like this is a clean play if you go for if you plan on going for a borderland. But if you plan on going for a borderland, the seal is just a little random unless you need the light target. Uh that's like a, a minor, like PE minor, I think. Or like an illegal play. Hope they don't have any other uh, PE minors for that. Because that can be a game loss. Real quick. Uh they go for a quad borrow. Um now they link off or synchro off into a Chaos Angel. That's even more random, right? If a Chaos Angel on the set, that's an urgent schedule. They chain that because the opponent has more cards. Oh, that's tough because that's so much value. Uh, I think one has to be four or lower, one five or higher or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I think the effects are negated though because... I don't know. I mean, it's draw, right? So it doesn't matter if they are negated or not. Uh, effect on that discard? What did they discard? There wasn't a discard, right? Or did I miss it? Uh, but they have a Savage there as well, so they at least... I mean, this is still fine, right? Um, I would personally put more value on the Borland in this scenario, just because uh, there's still a lot you have to deal with here on the board, and even if they didn't have the urgent schedule, you barely got rid of all of that. Uh, and I don't know how, how good Seal in this scenario is. I personally would have gone for the Borland, played a little bit better, would have had a little, a few more resources. Then again, we don't have any follow-up apart from the Magnum at Ed from Graveyard. So Seal is also like a good good line for that. They have to negate the Citadel here. This Peter summon that. Attack on that. But they still have two bodies on the board. Um, because we don't have access to that. Uh, end phase, the editor recharger. So that if anything of them gets destroyed, they can resummon it back with recharger. They still have a Dispater which can negate something because this is banished. They have a bounce and they have a negate. Um, but with two cards already on the board, uh, shit is going to be tough. And that's that's an immediate gig against X, right? Uh, so that is a guaranteed play. So you probably should have gone for like different bodies as well, right? There was the Infinite Trek Harvester, which doesn't do a lot. Uh, they're arguing here. They have to retake. What did they? Are oh, they highlighting quad borrow? What happened? Quad borrow. They didn't discard for quad borrow, right? No, wait. They have to remake a lot here. What happened? Does anyone? That's okay. Wait. So it's at this point, but they didn't make a quad borrow there. So maybe it's not the quad borrow uh, link thing. Uh, oh, that's a chaos space. Okay, then so they discarded. So they have to go remake from here because question mark. Oh wait, they didn't go into a quad borrow with a rocket, right? Yeah, because they went for Chaos Angel. Yeah, that was the illegal play. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. So okay. We got that under cover. Basically, I should be excused for that because I just noticed how quad how good quad borrow was and I only very recently started playing with it. Uh you know, so that seems like a game loss. Yeah, that makes sense, because that was also the second PE minor. Uh, oh my god, we even predicted it, right? We were like, watch out <laughs> that you don't get a second PE minor, and then they got a second PE minor. Okay, so th what happened is they went into Quad Border without a rocket, uh, and they couldn't have done it, like the whole play couldn't have done it differently. So yeah, uh, get punished heavily there. That sucks, but I mean, the nerves can get to you in a feature match. You get super hyper-focused on certain aspects, and you just lose them. But yeah, I feel like, in my opinion, the Borrow Land there would have been a way cleaner option. But because even if Pertos like got into a turn, they had like four card, like four cards in hand with the draw for turn, two on the field. Uh, with the Borrow Land, you would have gotten like rid of the whole field, no matter what happens. Even if Citadel comes out, you don't really care about that. And then you can easily just sit on the Borrow Land and then just negate the rank nine, which they have. And I don't think they will have a second out. And even if they have, they would have to force out so many. Like, they would have to chew through so many of the resources to get there. So I think uh, Borrowland in this uh, exact scenario would have been better. Uh, so they go for a Striker Dragon line here with Quick Launch, adding back a Tracer. Uh, and they still go for Chaos Pace, pitch the Safer. 
Uh, with four mon five minutes on the clock, you definitely want to go for a time win condition here if you play it. And if you do so, you want to play accordingly. You want to play around as uh, around impermanent Vela as best as possible. Uh, in Dragon Link, you have two scenarios for that. You have a branded beast, which you could chain on a imperm. You uh, attribute off this. Uh, what's it called, the Scarlight, for all, all you need for that is like any Bistio plus the Scarlight, or you can go for a Scarlight, uh, use its effect, if this gets negated, you can go for a Pisty line afterwards and use the effect again, because Scarlight is not once per turn, uh, you have multiple lines to go into with that, uh, you can also resummon it with this Pater, which is probably not gonna happen realistically, but you can do it, uh, using the Pisty here, already takes one out of these lines out. I don't know if I like that, uh, especially because you had, like, if you didn't even have to go for that striker play, right? You could have just gone for safer normal summon, go for this line, or, like, Chaos Space pitch the safer without using the striker dragon so weirdly. I mean, you can still normal summon the striker, of course, um, but that's a little weirdly played. Chaos Space, standard sh shenanigans here. You definitely want to burn with Scarlet here. Four minutes is way too little. Um, they go for a, a Ravine guy here, Romulus. You gotta love him. At the Quillop Serpent again, at the Ravine. So you can now use Ravine to get more access into a Rocket. So you could send an Absorado or you could send a Lubellion. But because you banished the Seyford, uh that seems so weird, right? Why didn't you go for... Um, like this line of play have the uh, like have the tracer banished, and then you resummon the tracer with the pisty, and then you can make a scarlet at least. You still lose to an imperm, and uh, you still lose to a Vela, But for the imperm, you would have had a Lubellian branded beast line available to you, I believe, because you yeah you should have that. Oh, we see the hand here. That's a droll tracer. I think that's another droll and a collab. That sucks. So they normal summon tracer here. No, they. Act oh, activate boot. Summon boot out of hand, okay. Um, effect on that. Yeah, that was weirdly played. Not gonna lie. And they have the Scarlet line there, so it's... Uh, I assume this Scarlet is not gonna resolve, just because Boston lost that match. But even then, with two minutes, there's not a lot you can do after the Scarlet resolves, so Petros could still go for a burn in main phase. Imperm comes down here. Uh, yeah. You could have played that one better, I think. Uh, because we knew that, like, double draw, Chaos Space, Safer, Quick Launch. So even if you go for Chaos Space, Quick Launch lines, like, you use Quick Launch as a Dark with the Striker line, and then you go for Chaos Space lines, then you still have a Safer Normal Summon. Uh, that is at least... Yeah, that should be enough for that line, honestly. Right, because you can, like, Chaos is Seyford, plus the Chaos Space line. The Chaos Space is the Romulus, normal summon Seyford. Um, link into Pisty, Ravine pitches the uh, Lubellion, uh, at Lubellion, summon Magnumid, Magnumid effect, tribute uh, Magnumid for Lubellion, effect Lubellion, get the Branded Beast. Oh no, you're missing one then. Right, because you want to keep the that on the board. Then you link the Lubellion off into Triple Burst. Or into Quad Barrel, maybe. You link that off. Oh, wait. You could link it off into Quad Barrel. Then you could use Pisty Effect, Summon Tracer, Effect Tracer, Pop Boot, or Ravine. Summon, um, uh, summon Savage. Yeah. And then you can use Quad Barrel Effect to uh, pop itself. Summon back two dragons. Uh, the the sev uh, the tracer and the recharger, and then you go for a scarlet, which you which you have protected by um, a savage. So you could have played around one imperm there um, with that play. Maybe they're not even playing branded beast. They still have a caliber as well, so that would have gone. You could have gone even further with that. Um, make like a dispater or something with a regain. I don't know if they would have done something. They go for a quad barrel effect. Quad barrel pitch. Summon back two, yeah. They've done goof that, sadly. They could have won this, but that happens. Um, nerfs get into the feature match. And they have a Savage plus Regain. Magnumid resolves here. I don't know if they just didn't do that. They seem a little pissed here. Book of Eclipse, that's huge. That deals with 
like the negate. Uh, time is called, but like Earth Machine should have some ways of burning to time. The the big rank twelve or rank ten, whatever fuck terrain there is, should be able to do it here. Um, that's just still okay. It's not that long. Let's quickly go through here. Um, yeah, yeah, that guy, uh, Juggernaut, whatever, and that's two K burn, and that's just game. GG. Oh man, oh, Boston was a little fucked up there, but that's imaginable. Uh, of course, losing a game because of nerves and having like, uh, because you like get a two PE minors in one match sucks. But that's just what happens on live stage if you are very nervous. I luckily wasn't as nervous in my feature match, but I can definitely uh, see how the nerves can get to you. And then you miss the the winning line in game three. At least in my opinion, it was a winning line. Maybe I'm missing something as well. Definitely let me down. No, no definitely let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if there was just missing something there, but I feel like that would have been a game-winning line there, just off uh, Tracer, Chaos Space, and Safer. But I guess that's Nurse, that's Yu-Gi-Oh, that can just happen to you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed today's replay analysis. This is way longer than I thought it's going to be, but of course, uh, the future match was quite long with one hour, and we speeded through it with the 1.5k speed. God damn it. Definitely very interesting match there. A lot to learn, especially um, from a Dragon Link perspective. If you don't know the super, uh, not the super heavy samurai, the Earth Machine list, of course, on the cards, you can really learn a lot from that. But from the Dragon's per perspective, I think Borrowland in game two would have been way better just because it's super hard to deal with for the uh, train, Earth Machine, whatever deck. And then in game three, you definitely could have, I think, burned for time there. Um, not like slow play, but like burn enough damage to win in time with the uh, first Savage and then Scarlight. Um, with the another Calibar in there, maybe there was even this Potter line, but just of the known cards we had, you definitely could have won that. But shit happens, man. Don't get it too personal if you're even watching this. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's class. Class is dismissed. You guys are free to leave. Professor Sunrise out. P -p -p Peace.